Buddy, Jamal here with Creator, and I have a special guest. Say hi. Hi, Marcela Gutierrez. Hi. Oh, we have a mic drop. Okay, and she's back. <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> you dropped it too early. <laughs> uh, tell everybody uh, what you do in your background, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, well, I'm a painter. Um, I grew up in Guatemala and I've been painting all my life and now that's what I do for a living. Um, I generally collaborate with the fashion industry and I work also on personal projects and, um, that's it. I live in and live and work in New York city now and, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. And how did you get started in painting? Did you go to school for it? Did you just decide I'm going to do it? Were you studying something else? Walk us a little bit through kind of how you came to do what you're doing now. Um, well, no, mainly I was, I was drawing in math class instead of paying attention. And that's, <laughs> I had an interest for drawing since I can remember. And I did not go to school. I did not go to fine art school. I went, um, to, I first studied industrial engineering for a little bit and I didn't like it. So I changed to architecture. My father was an architect, so I didn't want to let him down and be disappointed. So I did that for two years. And then I moved on to studying graphic design for about a year. And also I'm not, I don't like to work with computers so much. And I realized that it was uh, very much going to be like that. So, um, I ended up going to fashion design school in Central St. Martins and and then it was actually when I started working with Alexander McQueen that I started to develop a, uh, an illustration portfolio. Um, it was kind of not planned or premeditated, but it was what I wanted to do all along and I perhaps was not, I didn't believe that it was possible, I guess. Um, but uh, that's how it all started. So my education, I guess, there's definitely I learned a lot from I learned a lot from um from architecture I learned you know how to be precise and drawing straight lines and calculating space um in uh graphic design I learned a lot about color composition and um color theory um and in fashion design I mean we had they were really pushing us really hard um to teach us how to generate new ideas and to be creative and to be more free and spontaneous um, in the way that we designed or, or that we drew. So I guess it all kind of like put itself together, but I, I did just train myself uh, via trial and error um, to paint in watercolor, basically. <laughs> no, that's a very, I've heard that a version of that story a number of times where People start here, maybe they're doing, I've heard, we've heard of engineering and people just being like, oh, that sucks. And then mm -hmm. moving into something else. What I find interesting about your story is that everything you've kind of done, did actually led to what you're doing now, as far as you mentioned the architecture and then graphic design with color. And then I'm sure even studying a little bit of it, industrial design and thinking of shapes and, pat and patterns and just how to kind of put things together has kind of all added to or culminated in what you're doing now. So I think that's very interesting. And we have Eugene Henderson here mentions, what did you first pick up? What set did you first pick up? Watercolor or paints? And what is it about watercolor that drew you into eventually settling on, in on that? Um, I picked up, actually, I think when I was very little, I was painting with um, pastels and yeah, watercolor never crossed my mind, actually. I was doing a lot of collages somehow. Um, I would do birthday cards and stuff like that. And I think I, I fell in love with ink when I went to, to St. Martin's because we had to draw the collections that we were going to present. And they taught me how to draw with ink using a piece of paper and like grabbing it like that and then putting it in ink and painting with this so that this becomes all mushy and that you can't control it. So I really was fascinated because I've, I've been a, a perfectionist all my life. So I was fascinated with having a tool that didn't allow me to control 
And so it felt really freeing to experiment with, with that sort of release of, uh, of perfectionism. And, and then ink has a similar quality than watercolor. You know, it's also unpredictable. You can't really modify it once it's set on the paper. And all those things make me, you know, keeps me on my toes and on edge. And it's, it's really fascinating. I don't know. I like, I like, uh, I like that sensation of, of releasing control. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very interesting because all, all your backgrounds are very precise. Industrial design, very precise. Yeah, right? that's very, true. Very precise, graphic design, precise. Fashion, you actually have to be very precise. Yeah. And you're like, F that. I want to just <laughs> throw a bucket of paint, call it a day. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, let's um, yeah, see, don't jump into some questions here. Isn't it really good? So this person says, if a student came to you and wanted to focus their energy on becoming really good at color, how would you suggest they proceed? And at what point in the learning process should an artist really start to focus on color? Good question. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think I need to ask myself that first as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think color, it's, I don't know. I remember taking a color theory class and of course it was very technical to know that the the complementary colors, uh, and you know, like it's there. And but I really think, in terms of color, you can't go wrong when you look at nature. Any anywhere you look in nature, there's never a clash. It's always in in harmony. Um, and I think it's like a like a cheat sheet of what goes with what together. I don't know. And then you can, if if you don't, if you're not sure what colors are in harmony you should definitely look at a sunset look at a forest or look at a poisonous frog on that little branch which is like a dark brown and it's probably fluorescent uh yellow or something like that um so it's, it's very nice to observe from you know that universal intelligence which is already already knows it all you know <laughs> um but i think uh, i mean I don't think there's a, an order of when to start exploring with color, or I don't think you have to start with black and white or, and then graduate to color or anything like that. I think you should just go for it with whatever you feel like. I don't, it's, I guess it's scary if you, I guess you, they do teach you first how to draw and then how to paint. So I, I suppose that's where the, that uh, question comes from. But, you know, I, I, I don't think there's an order to it. I think you just, you just go for it. <laughs> I don't know. If that's a good answer or not. I think it was. <laughs> it was reasonable. We'll get back to it. Um, so let's jump into the work. But instead of um, the digital work, it would just be cool to just have you show some of your actual portfolio pieces, and then we'll show people the digital versions. I just think that's fun because we just okay. recently. So I think feel free to just pull those bad boys out. And we'll just right. you, and you can talk <laughs> Bad girls, actually. They're all oh, girls right. somehow. Bad girls. Bad girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is funny because nobody gets to see, we were speaking about this before, that nobody gets to see the actual work, the tangible piece of paper. And it's usually shown on the format of an iPhone or a magazine, so it's reduced in size and you don't get to see the the amount of paint so, and the, the texture of everything. No? So... I think this is nice to show something more analog. Yeah, so I would say just bring a couple out and then just kind of walk through them. Thank you for okay. So this this is um, a portrait I did for Harper's Bazaar Spain for a beauty um, photo uh, uh, editorial. It was uh, to advertise um, mascara by YSL. Um, and I had free freedom to, to choose like uh, the composition and however I, I wanted to display or show the, the makeup, basically. Um, this, this is from an editorial um, that I did for Vogue Spain. Um, it was really interesting because they sent me just the pictures to do of the runway this was a valentino look and i had to imagine how they the clothes would look worn and in movement or in or in whatever position that i chose to to to, to paint this so i had to 
sort of like take a picture of myself wearing something similar. And so it was really awkward. I had to go kind of like, like that, like her, <laughs> take, and take a photograph of myself with like a towel or something that resembled sort of the texture of this so that I could properly get the texture and the volume of that, uh, of that um, uh, outfit, <laughs> of that garment. And then I usually grab the face from somewhere and grab the hair from somebody else. And so it's, it's like a Frankenstein, basically. <laughs> Um, what else? Uh, this is just a, an eye. <laughs> I love to draw eyes. I, I really feel, I get lost in them, really. They're just so fascinating. Um, but this is just for practice, basically. Um, this is one of my favorites. This was a part of an editorial for interview magazine in Germany and it was an advertorial for Celine and I wanted to do inspired on uh on Hannah Hoch she was one of the first people to do collages so I wanted to paint the the clothing as if they were uh collaged but they're actually painted they're flat um so it was really fun to do this one um Shall I go on? <laughs> uh, this is another one from that series uh, for Interview Magazine. Um, it's called Show and Tell, so show us and tell us all <laughs> I feel embarrassed to show uh, and tell, really. <laughs> no, bring, keep it coming. Well, this is, the, this is another one from the same series. I must say, this was one of my favorite uh, projects uh, because I got to go a little bit crazy. Usually, um, I guess, depending on on who you work with, it's more restrained. Um, but in this case, when you're doing editorials or you're doing magazines like Interview Germany, they, they really give you creative freedom to do however much, whatever you want, really. So it's a nice, it's a nice platform to explore and, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Um, you should see the mess I'm leaving back <laughs> so this is perfect uh, great question here person says you draw a lot of people and faces which I find is very difficult to get the proportions correct what feature of the face do you find to get the most practice to perfect what feature of the face? I guess, I mean... Do you find took the most practice to perfect? I suppose it's, it's more, rather than a feature, more the balance of where the, the placement of the nose, eyes, and lips are. You know, so sometimes when you're, if you're drawing for the first time, the, the eye naturally distorts. And so you have to really observe and let's, practice. Let's, let's look at that photo you just had. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to this. <laughs> so, I guess this one doesn't have. Let me just find you another image. Uh, that where is some? Okay, this one. So, for example, the distance between the eyes, and the proportion, the where the nose is placed, and the the distance between the nose and the mouth, the also like where the, the end of the mouth ends in relation to the eyes. I think that's what you need to practice more than drawing the feature is the, the location of everything on a face. You know, everybody obviously has a different shape of a face, but you, it's, it's more or less both, both eyes are up here, the nose is in the middle and the mouth is here, right? So I think that's the thing that you have to practice the most. Just, I remember I used to grab like a Hello Magazine or whatever, because um, I, I, I think before 2005, I, I couldn't paint faces. I couldn't draw a face. I remember that even in Saint, when I was in St. Martin's, all my drawings for, with, uh, uh, for school were faceless. They were only with the body. And so I was determined one holiday and I grabbed a magazine and, and I started painting 
the people in the magazine just over and over and over and over and over and over and over until then I decided to put the magazine away and start uh, drawing them by memory and then that if you do it a million times you'll you'll get it right you know your eye becomes you it's trained to understand proportion easier also like the in terms of proportion I realized that the the best way to learn proportion is to draw the human body that's I remember I was uh, in graphic when I was studying graphic design I had a a three-hour class of figure drawing and I did that three hours uh, for a year and that really trained my my ability to to understand proportion or to interpret proportion easier let's say um well the because the, no, the nose in reality for example is just it's just two shadows here and then two shadows down here. And depending on how you place it, um, it's, it's not really that drawn. I guess the eye, the eye is just like an almond shape with a little circle in the middle. I don't know if that makes sense. Should we listen cool. to another question? <laughs> no, yeah. Um, so uh, this is a softball from, uh, your guy here. <laughs> what are the topics that right now are moving and touching you in the creative process? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, did he ask that? <laughs> um, I guess I want right now what is moving me is to be more spontaneous and heartfelt with my paintings. I think for almost 10 years I've been interpreting now uh, faces of models and they have to, they've had to look seamless and perfect and quite orchestrated. And, and you know, for, for, for all those years, it's been fascinating to, because I was learning in the, in the process that I was working, it was exciting to me to, to do it, you know, because every time I would finish a, a project, I would have learned something new or I would have gotten a little bit better. But now, um, now I feel that I that I've definitely um, dominated the technique. So it's not exciting to to repeat it. It becomes meticulous if you just do what you already know how to do over and over and over. So I'm more excited about interpreting in a in a more yeah expressive and sporadic and gut intuitive way. Um, so. Yeah, I think I'm fascinated with maybe like going back to basics, uh, unlearning technique if that's possible, and 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 um, you know back to color composition balance. That's actually a great. Um, you just mentioned there about going back to basics and unlearning stuff. Somebody asked the question. I'm a fan of your work. What's one art design rule that you think should be broken? One art is all of them. <laughs> there should be no rules, really. I mean, the, the, you just definitely have to be the most yourself you can, because that's what's, that's what's going to make sense, or that's, that's, the, that's the true nature of every person. I think everybody is an artist, really. Like it, only people, some people are interested in the topic and practice it more than others. But I don't think there should be any art rules. Of course, it's it's very nice to learn um, from from great um, uh, great art from the past, you know, and how they went about uh, about stuff. But even like most of the artists that anybody admires, they were all super rebellious and they broke every single possible rule. I I, I imagine, you know. So so yeah, no rules. Uh, speaking of which, you mentioned working with McQueen. Talk about that. Uh, what, like, what do you mean working with McQueen? Like, what did you do actually? Like, exactly. Um, I was painting show show pieces by hand, or and I was also and like anything that would go into embroidery for the runway. Um, I was drawing that. Um, but yeah, mainly ma mainly it was hand paint hand painting uh, show pieces. So pieces that wouldn't be sold in retail; they would only be used for the runway. Uh, that was that was an intensive an intensive lesson I must say I, I never I don't think I've ever worked so much like I did then uh, but it was one of the most educational I, I learned how hard I could I didn't know that I could work so much and 
and also to be in the presence of such a genius is the, would keep you motivated and energetic and you know standing long hours or whatever it was required of, of me to do so yeah. let's um switch topics and let's pull up the um pdf i think and do a little bit more but show people kind of the digital versions of it and we'll look okay. at the photos. i think that'd be great all right let's see if i don't screw this up you got it stop screen share no so it's screen sharing already okay mm -hmm. while we're at it let's uh put, queue up some more questions Ooh. What major breakthroughs have you had as an artist? Were there times in your career as an intermediate painter or as an advanced painter where you were frustrated? How did you push through those? Did you attend a workshop or try something different style-wise? Mm. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's all been a challenge. Every single, <laughs> always. Um, I think, well, mostly at the beginning, it's just you, you're, you want to do something and you want to convince the world that you can do this and nobody gives you a chance because you haven't done it before. And, and yeah, so you have to, I think what I did to get heard was to kind of like self commission myself or pretend like I had the, the job and do it and post it online or, or do an exhibition. And, you know, whenever I I've had the challenge of not having work, I've, I've, I invent the work and then somehow I think there's something about action. When you put action, you receive action. So that somehow moves something and then you get jobs through doing stuff. You know, like the thing is to con continue moving and absolutely it's good to, to try new things and new styles, but um, I don't know. I think also like time pressure has been a good thing for me. I've, most of the time, all of the projects that I've gotten, like the most exciting ones that I didn't know how the hell I was gonna pull them off, had an extreme limited deadline, which puts you on this other, like this, uh, this, um, I think that the, the, the pressure of, 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 of having no time to change things or no time to to react brings out the best in you somehow like the, your body goes into emergency mode or something or your mind and and somehow you're able to pull out your best that that's been usually my 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 experience or how i feel i've jumped uh and learned and leaped into the next level in my career oh yeah <laughs> i guess that was better no um, are you pulling it up, Jamal? Yeah, it's me. I'm pulling it up. That will be faster. Okay, let's see. Shall I pull it up again? Okay, start screen share. Um... Can you see that? Yeah, looks good. Okay. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Is this like the worst uh, chat that you've had on live? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. If you want to make that uh, full screen, I think that'd be cool. Okay. You can see that, right? Uh, yeah, you can probably make it even like wider. Okay. Yep. On the left side too. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Perfect. Okay. So this is one of my favorite paintings. I think, um, I remember I really, I loved self-service magazine and I really, I really wanted to work with them somehow. I was living in Barcelona at the time and I had one, uh, one of their magazines on my desk and I decided to just paint the, the cover. And then I 
I sent the picture of the of the painting to their to their Facebook page, to their Twitter, to any email I could find. And they replied saying that they really loved it and that they wanted to buy it. And I was so excited. And I, of course, because I did it uh, to show, just to like as a homage, I didn't want to profit from it. So I decided to, to gift it to them. And then a few months later, um, Ezra Petronio commissioned me to draw to paint one of his polaroids for just for him personally and it was very exciting for me uh, i remember and yeah it was i wanted to to impress him so much that i really i think i i it really, i feel this painting shows that i i did my i did it with all my heart <laughs> um yeah <laughs> oh Sorry, I cannot, there. Um, this one here on the right hand side is, was used for the cover of the No Cultural Almanac, which is a, an, a yearly almanac that my friend Masha Orlov, um, uh, she, she created that, that uh, almanac and she commissioned me to do the cover. And it was, I, I love this one because I, the idea was to, show many people in one face and I decided to to do a very graphic approach and very obvious with one eye in a circle and like it white uh, belonging to one person the other eye in a square belonging to another person so there's five different people and if you look at it by from far it's it looks like a face even though it's five different people um this was for for Vogue uh Spain Showing the collections. Um, this one is, is another editorial for Vogue Spain. It was a Dior, uh, a Dior look. And this on the on the right is uh, an intermission for a book that my husband designed for Stefan Brueggemann uh, for Isabella Blow, and it was kind of like the for used for the pages that divide the chapters of the book, and it's inspired on. It was a night with Isabella Blow wearing all her Alexander McQueen collection that she had bought his first collection from university and she was wearing it. And so it was inspired on a print of one of the dresses. Oh, sorry. This is another portrait for uh, Vogue. Um, sorry, for Harper's Bazaar, uh, for the Yves Saint Laurent Mascara. Oh my God. That's again, I showed you this one, the one on the left. And the one on the right is also for the same project. Also this one. Yeah, I guess I guess you can see that I really like to draw that, the pink eyes. This was for the Prada uh, flagship store in here in Soho and in LA. This is one of the most exciting projects I think I've ever done. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it when I, when I was doing it. Um, it was uh, one of those, I remember um, I was, I came to the shop, I was here in New York and I came to the shop and I told my husband, like, I, I wish someday I could do this. And three months later I was doing it. It's almost like miraculous how sometimes that can happen. Um, and at the time, this is one of the projects that there was very little time and I had to paint about nine portraits in about seven days. And I didn't know, I didn't think that I knew how to paint as, as well as it was required because I knew that it was going to be blown up in a huge scale and I knew where it was going to be. And, and I think I just went into that zone of there's no chance to fail and I just dove into it and somehow I managed to finish it and it was all, it, it was okay. Um, I was, yeah, I'm, I'm usually, I have a hard time focusing and this, I was very, very, very focused for this project. It meant so much. Um, should I continue or should I? Uh... 
Jamal. Okay. Yeah, this is amazing. Hello. I'm just focused on watching it. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Oh, should I continue? Yes, please. Okay. Um, this was. Um, it turned out to be. It, for initially, it was used for the launch of the number four around the world album. It was supposed to be a video. Um, well, it was a video for uh, for the launch of that album, and then it it uh, got used to for the remix and album for the re remix album cover. And that was also like a crazy deadline situation. I remember that I was in Los Angeles and I was going to have an exhibition and I was still painting in the motel uh, last minute for my own exhibition. And then I, I had to do this and I had to draw seven Beyonce's <laughs> in like 24 hours. And so I did not sleep for two days. I didn't sleep the day before because I did a first test and then it was, I had to do a, a, a second one, and I and this one it had to be right. It was, yeah, I don't know how I managed. Really, it was painting it on the on the bed mattress of the motel. <laughs> but yeah, so like this is the type of situations that when you don't know how to go about something, and the, the pressure is always very very healthy. I think. Mm, this was, I think, for the another magazine uh, online. I'm not, I don't remember, or document journal. It was just uh, an interpretation of the 90s campaign of Calvin Klein with Kate Moss and Mark Wahlberg that uh, Fabian Baron did with, I guess, I think it was Mario Sorrenti who took those pictures. Not so sure. Um, but I also like, I think I was on the mood of the collages. It was after I did those collages for Celine. So I wanted to play with painting collage, even if it's one, 2D. Um, that these dresses are also for, for Vogue Spain. This is a painting that my friend, of a, of a photograph that my friend Nico Bustos took of Malgosia Vela and we were experimenting to see if we could work together, trying to to put in the same image, paint and photograph. But I guess it has to be less realistic for that to work because you can't tell. I mean, you can tell in some in some areas that it's a painting, but in others, it isn't. So we still have to find a way to collaborate. I think. <laughs> so this is for an example of the painted pieces I did for Alexander McQueen. Um, it was a helmet painted with gouache. Sometimes I use gouache. Gouache has a similar quality than um, watercolor, um, you know, water-based. It, it just has more pigment and it's a bit more matte uh, than watercolor. Well, well, watercolor is obviously more transparent, but the colors are not as saturated because it's meant to be a transparent layer. Um, yeah, that was incredible. To be to be to be there really was incredible. This is also a drawing for the embroideries of this runway show for McQueen. Um, this is just a thirty-minute painting, like a very quick gestural painting. And I love to do these these quick ones. Really, they're they're it's almost energizing to do them. And you can, you know, you, you don't have time to think too much or calculate too much. So you, you take risks that you wouldn't take if you're taking your time or trying to be too much of a perfectionist. I want to get into another question real quick uh, uh -huh. from Miguel again. He says, how do you imagine your artwork will be in the next five years? I think that's pertinent since you're showing some of it now. In the next five years, it will be abstract. <laughs> I so, think you have to definitely. If you want to move, want to move uh, the the picture to the right, it's showing us twice because we have two like um, to the oh, right. To the right, yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh, oh no. Well, you could probably just stop the screen share too as well if you wanted to do that. Okay, we can stop. 
oh yeah, so in the next five years, I mean, I want to gradually, I don't think you can just decide I'm an abstract painter suddenly, you know, like from, from going, from being very figurative, almost hyper-realistic, I think it has to be a gradual transition. So I am working on, on trying to, to free my hand. It's kind of hard when you've been doing just very precise work and always from a photograph to just being, you know, a hundred percent spontaneous. But yeah, it's, it's a process that will, the evolution will happen only with, by doing, by practice really. Uh, but yeah, most of the paint, most of the artists that I admire definitely are just colors, uh, co color, color balance, or very graphic. Um, I want the painting to be dictated by color and not by by form necessarily. So, but God knows, I don't know. Like I have to just practice and see. You know, five years. We have a softball question here, really soft one. Um, what is your favorite dance move? Uh, the reverse cowgirl with a twist. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my sister. <laughs> um, on a serious note, uh, what is the, from Shalula here, what is the drive behind your work, you think? Um, the drive behind my work, I've, I've always wanted to make my, my father proud, I guess. I don't know. I, you know, he was an architect and he used to draw and paint. And I always wanted to just, um, how can I say? There was, I just never thought that I would be so lucky that I would do this for a living. Uh, and so the drive is, is, is just to do my best, do it with all my heart and be able to, to hopefully, you know, inspire others in that, you know, the starting a career at, uh, as painting in watercolor at 30 is possible still, you know? Um, and uh, I'm just uh, fascinated to, to see how, if you really put your all into your, your soul, your heart, your passion into everything that you do, you, you have the most incredible results. And, I guess that that's my drive. I don't know. That was, I think, the way to end this. I was going to ask something else, but I don't know if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and everybody watching, definitely feel free to check out Marcelo's work. It's absolutely amazing. All right, we'll let one person ask one more follow-up question. But okay. You're wasting our time. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Jose. All of your works, are all of your works done by hand? If he was watching this, then yes, he would know that already. Yeah. I, I can actually answer that for you. Um, that's a yes. She, if you, so if we you can show you, him. Yes, show you both. Yeah. These are all drawn by hand. And then if they're not, she scanned it, or rather, then the digital versions are scanned in. Yeah, this is scanned in parts to be afterwards used for a magazine or whatever. So, Jose, next time come to the stream early. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but serious note, definitely feel free to, he says, fine, one more. You're free to steal one artwork from any museum. What would it be? <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I think I would love to steal the Anish Kapoor big, big, uh, sort of like uh, it looks like a like a horn. It's red, and it's so massive <laughs> that I could live in it. Right it here. Don't have, so if you do this though, it is missing. Then we'll know. Yeah, yeah. I would need a helicopter or something to get it though. <laughs> yeah, but we can. Definitely feel free to check out her website. Also check out her on Instagram. Uh, she might be on Facebook or all these other digital channels. Everybody's everywhere nowadays. Uh, your work is absolutely amazing. Love it. We'll definitely have to get you on here again and talk about more work and other topics and other things like that. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you so much for having me, Jamal. Thank you so much. Uh, you're the best. <laughs> all right. Everybody feel free to watch the replay. Bye, Marcel. Bye.